I think there's a great uh, practical application of circuits and resistors, and the examples are the voltage divider and the current divider. And I was going to use a real battery of 1.5 volts, but I said, no, I'm not going to do that because I want to have, I don't want to use a calculator. But let's talk about the voltage divider first. Imagine that I have a 10 volt battery, but I only want 3 volts. I want to apply 3 volts to something. So how do I take that and get 3 volts out of it? DC. There's an AC way with transformers and stuff, but DC. Well, we're going to use what's called a voltage divider. Let me draw it as a circuit diagram. So here is my battery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two resistors like this in series, R1 and R2. So here's R1, here's R2, and let's call this V, B, the voltage of the battery. And I want the voltage across R1 to be 3 volts. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So I know that the loop rule applies, right? So I'm going to have an electric current coming out of here, I, and VB minus, that's a B, minus I R1 minus I R2 is equal to zero, right? Because the loop rule says that if I add up all the voltages around a loop, I have to get to zero. So if I go around here, the voltage drop across R1 is I R1, R2 is I R2, okay? So I can write this VB equals I times R1 plus R2, or more importantly, I can solve for I. So I is going to be VB over R1 plus R2. Now suppose I measure across just R1. Well, what's the voltage across R1? Well, V1 is going to be I R1, but that's I right there. So I'm going to plug in this value for I. So I get VB times R1 over R1 plus R2. And I did it. That's it, right? So this says if I want, suppose I want V1 equals 3 volts, V battery is 10, then I need this to be 0.3. So I need 0 0.3 to be equal to R1 over R1 plus R2. Now you can pick. You can pick what you want. Let's pick something easy, right? So if I say R1 equals 3 ohms and R2 equals 7 ohms, you notice that that 3 plus 7 is 10, then I'm going to get uh, 0 0.3 is 3 over 3 plus 7. So 3 over 10 is 0.3. So it works. So this divides the voltage relative to these two values, right? So if I had a 10 and a 10, well, that's 50% of the voltage on this, 50% on that. If I had, uh, let's do... R1 is 2, R2 it is 8, then it would be 8 over 10. Oh, I shouldn't have picked 10. That was, that was a bad one. Well, you can pick anything. Let's say this is 10. So it would be 2 over 12 for that one, and this would be 10 over 12 for that one. Voltage divider divides voltage. Get it? Okay, now for the current divider. This one's a little bit more complicated because we're dealing with a, we don't really care about the battery, we care about the current. So imagine that I have some current I coming in. Let's say I equals 10 amps. Yes, that's large. And I want to split it so that some of the current goes through there and some goes through here. So we'll call that R1 and we'll call that R2. And maybe I want three amps to go through this. So we're gonna use a current divider. Okay, so in this case, I have two different currents, I1 and I2, and that's I. And I know that I equals I1 plus I2 because this obeys the junction rule. As the current comes in, you can't have current charge buildup, so just as much has to leave that junction. So that's going to be I1 and I2, and those have to add up to zero. I also know the loop rule is true. true. So if I go around this loop, the voltages have to add up to zero. Now, one way to write that is to say the voltage across this and the voltage across this have to be the same because they're, they have the same endpoints. So I can write this as I1 R1 equals I2 R2. So that's the junction rule. That's the loop rule. Now, I'm going to solve this for I2. So I2 equals I minus I1. Just, right, subtracting both sides. Now, if I put that in up here, I get I1 
R1 equals I minus I1 R2. And I want to solve for I1. So let's multiply this out. I get I R2 minus I1 R2. I'm going to add this to both sides and I get I1 R1 plus I1 R2 equals I R2. I can factor out the I1, I1 R1 plus R2 is I R2 and then I can divide both sides by that and I get my answer. I1 is going to be I times R2 over R1 plus R2. And you'll notice it looks very similar to the voltage divider except that the voltage divider said the voltage across one was the total voltage R1 over R1 plus R2. This is R2 divided by R1 over R2. So if I want three amps to go through this, so if I want this to be three amps and this to be seven amps, then I would say R1 would be seven ohms. R2 would be three ohms, right? So in that case, and you probably wouldn't do that because well, you could, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so in that case, if if this is seven ohms, then less of the current is going to go through the more resistance, right? But it is still a current divider. That's a current divider right there. So I can pick any values I want here and split up the current. But the key thing here is that if I want 30% of the current to go through uh, this wire, then I want that resistor to have 30% of the total. And there you go. Voltage divider, current divider. Fun stuff. The end.